Good night. Good night. We're going to wait uh, for a moment to the others to come to the meeting. So we're going to wait for a minute or two, I think. So don't worry. Okay, we are in the second session of this week. Remember that you need to complete the section number three. If you have problems or you have troubles with some of the exercises, we can complete it here on the session. Remember that we have done that before on the section number two, uh, I mean, in the section number one and number two. And in this case, we are going to do it with section number three and also with the midterm. And in the case of the midterm, I think we're going to complete it. Or in this case, we're going to um, like to analyze the different parts of the midterm on the last day of this week. So we are going to do it on Thursday. And we are going to see the different parts that we need to develop on at the midterm. Uh, because you know that in those kind of uh, exercises or in the, those kind of exams, we have like different parts like listening, writing, uh, grammar, and all of that things. But in this case, you're not going to use like the spoken form of the language because uh, in that case, it's not related to the exam. Um, we are just going to talk about the topic that we were developing yesterday. In this case, we are going to complete that information and then we are going to uh, see a video that is related to the next topic that we are going to develop. In this case, we are going to listen to people talking about the, uh, the neighborhood and the elements that we can find on the place in which we are living in this moment. Vamos a terminar el tema de los countable and uncountable nouns que están eh, referidos también con lo que es la parte de el there is y el there are. Y vamos a, eh, vamos a terminarlo porque ya vamos a, a finalizar con el tema de los eh, nombres contables y no contables. Y luego vamos a ver ese video que tiene que ver con... Eh, Lo vamos a llamar de diferentes formas. Eh, estamos hablando de la ciudad. It is not the city. It is related to the place in which live. Es como la colonia. Eh, eh, también lo podemos eh, utilizar. A... Tal vez le podemos dar difer el barrio. Le podemos dar como diferentes eh, formas a esta, a esta traducción. Dependiendo también del lugar en el que nosotros estamos viviendo. Um, it's not like I'm just going to tell you that uh, you're going to use one um, meaning. Es como vecindario, barrio, colonia. It's depending on the place that you are living in this moment. So that is why we're going to give like different uh, translation of the word neighborhood. Um, and that information that we are going to use with the uh, conversation, uh, we're going to use it for the knowledge check that we have on the platform. I, I think that you have completed some of the knowledge check that we have on the platform already. And that's good because you are going to have enough time to complete all the activities that you have on the platform. 
Uh, but if you uh, didn't complete that part of the knowledge check, we are going to do it like a review of the exercises that we have there. So don't worry about that because we are going to work on that part too. So in this case, I'm going to go to the information that we have on the document. That is this one. And give me a moment, I'm going to take this out because I have two different things here. And I need to move this one and this one. Okay, in this case, we were talking about the countable nouns and we have this information at this moment. Uh, we have the countable and uncountable nouns. The first thing is talking about the count nouns. And it's saying that they can be separated into individual units and count. And they usually have both a singular and a plural form. We have different examples. And also we were talking about some um, countable nouns that just have a plural form. In this case, we have the words clothes, hands, jeans, shorts, and pajama. In this case, estamos hablando de los nombres eh, que eh, tenían su forma plural, que en este caso ustedes no lo van a usar de forma singular, ya que en algunos casos cambiaría, eh, cambiaría el significado de las palabras. Eh, como lo veíamos en el caso de short, que si lo utilizamos así, short, without the S, it is not related to a uh, cloth no está relacionado a una parte de la vestimenta, sino al tamaño, ¿verdad? Y también alguien mencionaba lo de los glasses, los lentes, que si lo utilizamos en singular y decimos solo la palabra glass, se refiere a un vaso o se refiere al material, ¿verdad? Al vidrio. Entonces, en ese caso, no podríamos cambiar las palabras eh, a su forma singular porque o no estarían correctas o simplemente le cambiamos el significado. Good night. Okay, in this case, we're going to continue with the next information that we have related to this one. But in this case, we're going to continue with the non-con nouns. Ya vimos los nombres contables y algo um, importante con esos nombres contables. Um, in the case of the countable nouns, almost all the things, almost all the objects in English are countable nouns. Casi todos los objetos, casi todos um, las cosas, ¿verdad? En inglés son nombres contables. Um, but I have something else to say that in some cases when we are using the words in English, uh, they have like very specific words that are countable and uncountable nouns. And in some cases, these words are not like the same in different languages. So that's why we're going to focus just on English words or words that they use in the US. In this case, we're talking about United States of America. Son simplemente las palabras que utilizan en Estados Unidos. No lo vamos a comparar con palabras de otros lados porque puede cambiar, ¿verdad? El hecho de utilizar ciertas palabras en nombres contables y ciertas palabras en nombres no contables. En este caso, solo nos enfocamos en las palabras contables y no contables de Estados Unidos y por eso tal vez podemos diferir de algunas, pero básicamente son las que ellos utilizan en su idioma o en su país. So that's why we are like clarifying this information. Now, we are going to talk about the noun count nouns. And also we are going to say that we are going to have different categories of words. En este caso, sí vamos a hacer categorías de palabras, ya que eh, necesitamos expresar cuáles palabras o cuáles categorías o 
qué nombres, ¿verdad? Vamos a utilizar en esta parte de los noun count nouns. So in this case, we're going to have two, four, six, eight, nine different categories in these uh, noun count nouns. So in this case, when we're talking about um, knock on nouns, we are talking about different things. In this case, we are going to like use these expressions or these nouns as masses or abstract quantities. In este caso, cuando hablemos de nombres no contables, vamos a hablar de masas, o sea, es la categoría completa. En este caso es como un grupo de cosas que no pueden ser separadas a la ligera. O que básicamente no tienen la misma forma de conteo que los objetos que ya vimos en los countable nouns. En este caso, pues, son cosas diferentes. So, in this case, we are going to see the categories. En las categorías tenemos en la primera uh, mass. Es una masa, pero no como la que utilizamos para eh, hacer pan o cosas así, sino es un grupo grande de cosas que no pueden ser separadas fácilmente, porque incluso separadas no tendríamos como eh, la noción de qué tipo de cosa es. Es just a mass. In this case, we have the word work. Homework and money. In this case, we're talking about the amount of money, not the materials in which we have uh, the coins or the like the paper that you are using in these kind of uh, things. In this case, we're just talking about the amount. Uh, natural substance. Una sustancia natural like air, ice, water, and fire. Then we have food. Tenemos la comida. And we have rice, milk, coffee, and sugar. Then we have an abstract concept. Un concepto abstracto. Y aquí podemos utilizar la palabra advice, que son los consejos. Happiness. Health. And education. Then we have a game, tenemos juegos. No los utensilios, no las cosas que utilizamos para jugar. El juego en sí. A game, uh, we're talking about soccer, tennis, hockey, and chess. Porque en este caso, en el ajedrez, nosotros podemos decir, ah, pero yo puedo contar las piezas que utilizo en el tablero de ajedrez. But it is not related to the things. It's related to the whole game in which you are thinking about the movements that you are going to complete on that section or in that game. Then you have a disease. I mean, you don't have a disease. We are talking about the category that it's called disease. Enfermedades, ¿verdad? We have polio, influenza, and malaria. 
We have a lot of uh, DCS, but in this case, we're just going to use these ones as examples. Then you have a subject of a study, a subject of a study. Una eh, materia, ¿verdad? Un, para estudiar, o sea, estamos hablando de materias que podemos ver en la, en la escuela, en la universidad, or whatever. A place we are like using to study. So in this case, we have economics. Then we have physics. Astronomy. Biology. And history. Then we have a language. También tenemos los idiomas. Arabic, Chinese, Spanish, and English. And the last one, an activity. Una actividad. Pero esta actividad, nosotros la vamos a agregar, I mean con la forma ing. ing form. How comes? Well, like this is women, dancing, reading, smoking, and drinking. Estas actividades, cuando las estemos utilizando de esta forma, en los Nankan nouns, y lo vamos a utilizar con su forma ing. En ese caso, sí tenemos que uh, hacer esa parte, ¿verdad? Utilizar esa parte. Ok. In this case, I have two activities for you, but give me a moment. I'm going to stop this one because I didn't uh, put the image on the document. No he puesto el, el, la imagen en el documento porque eh, no quería que lo vieran todavía. Ahora sí, se los voy a agregar. In this case, you are going to have two different exercises. In one of these, you are going to complete the sentences with there is and there are. En este caso van a utilizar el, el there is y el there are. Se lo van a poner cuál es la correcta, o sea, en cada una de ellas. Y en la otra, que son eh, dos, vamos a utilizar there isn't and there aren't. And you need to, to focus, in this case, you need to focus on the words that you have there. En ese caso nos vamos a enfocar en las palabras. Si son palabras... Eh, contables o palabras no contables. Y vamos a decidir cuál de los dos va en cada una de las, de las frases que tenemos ahí. So I'm going to put both of the images that I, have, that I have for you on the exercise. And then I'm going to show you the images and you are going to have time to think about the answers. You are going to read the exercises, the phrases, and then you're going to help me with the information. So in this case, I'm going to share with you this thing. Okay, we have here the two images. Letter A and letter B. In letter A, we are going to begin with letter A. We're going to complete the following sentences with there is, there are in affirmative. You are going to read the phrases and you are going to decide if the uh, expression is there is or there are. Dependiendo de la palabra que ustedes tengan ahí, ustedes van a decidir si es there is o si es there are. Luego en B vamos a completar las oraciones con there isn't and there aren't. Pero aquí tenemos que enfocarnos 
en si la palabra es contable o no contable. So, in this case, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to read the uh, two different activities and then we are going to complete the uh, statements with the correct form of there is and there are. Vamos a completarlo en unos cinco o seis minutos y luego vamos a irlos diciendo uno por uno, ¿verdad? ¿Cuáles son las respuestas? So, you have time right now to uh, think about the answers and to read the uh, statements. If you have uh, troubles reading the information, you can tell me and I'm going to do it kind of bigger for you or something else. I'm going to do it like this. Okay. So you have a couple of minutes right now to read this information.
the letter A. That is the first one. And uh, we're going to do it like, um, in this case, we're just going to put numbers and what is the expression that is correct for this one. In this case, I'm going to do it like number one, number two, and that thing. So we're going to have here number one. And we're going to begin reading. And it says, my name is Annie and I live in a very big house. So in this case, I'm sorry, we're going to use there is or there are. There is. There, there are. Is. No, there are. There there, are. Okay, in this case, is there are because you are saying there are 23 rooms. Cuando la palabra lleva S, en este caso, ¿verdad? Que es como eh, lo más representativo de los plurales. Obviamente, cuando dice 23 habitaciones, se refiere a algo en plural. So, in this case, there are. There are 23 rooms in my house. But... There is, there are? There are. There, there are. are. Okay, there are only 12 bedrooms. There are only 12 bedrooms. I live in one of the rooms on the third floor. In my room, there is or there are? There, there is. is. Okay, there is what? A huge bed. Hay una cama enorme. And there is or there are? There are. There are. Okay. There are. There are nine windows. Hay nueve ventanas. My bedroom isn't small. On my bed, there is or there are lots of pillows. Uh. Yeah, there, there are. are very good. There are, and there is. There are. There is. There is. There, there is. is my cat. Very good. There is my cat. Fluffy. The cat's name is Fluffy. In my closet, there is. There are many toys. There, there, are. Are. there are. Very good. There are many toys, and. Also, I mean, yes, see, and there is, there are also many clothes. There are. There are. Okay, there are many clothes. I don't have a bathroom in my bedroom, but there is, there are. There is. There, there is. is. Excellent. There is a bathroom next to my room. Also, in my house, there is or there are two kitchens? There are. There are. Very good. There are two kitchens. A big dining room and three living rooms. The house is really big. Okay, we have completed this exercise number one. Now, we are going to see the next one. In this case, we're just going to add the uh, negative form. There isn't or there aren't. We are going to begin with number one. There isn't or there aren't a flight from here to London. There isn't. There isn't. Okay, very good. There isn't. Next one, number two, there isn't, there aren't any movies that I want to see in the cinema. There, are, there, there aren't. aren't. Very good, there aren't. Number three, I'm very hungry, but there isn't, there aren't any food in the refrigerator. There aren't. Any food? There, there isn't, aren't. there aren't. Isn't. No, there isn't. There isn't. There isn't. Ah, very good. En este caso, estamos utilizando simplemente la palabra comida como una categoría, ¿verdad? 
eh, si dijéramos algo en específico como huevos, eh, eggs, eh, cucumbers, tomatoes, ahí sí utilizaríamos el there aren't. Pero como en este caso dice que no hay ninguna comida, o sea, no hay ningún eh, elemento, algo que podamos comer, entonces en este caso es there isn't. Number four. Eh, we want to go to the concert, but there isn't, there aren't any tickets. There aren't. Ah, okay, there aren't any tickets. Number five, there isn't or there aren't any movie, I, I mean, any mo money in my bank account so I can pay the bill. There isn't. There isn't. Very good, there isn't. Excellent. Number six, there isn't, there aren't 70 minutes in an hour. There Very good. There aren't. Number seven. In my neighborhood, there isn't, there aren't any children. There isn't. Are you sure? No, there aren't any children. Exactly, there aren't because you are talking about kids. Very good. There aren't. Number eight, Henry can bake a cake because there isn't, there aren't any sugar in the cupboard. There aren't. There isn't. There isn't. There isn't. There isn't. There isn't. Yes, there isn't. Yes, in this case it's isn't because it's an uncountable noun. Sugar is uncountable noun. Number nine, it's sunny today and there isn't, there aren't a cloud in the sky. There isn't. Very good, there isn't. Any cloud, a cloud in the sky. And the last one, I'm sorry, there isn't, there aren't any letters for you today. There aren't. Okay, there are. Excellent. Very good. So this is the uh, exercise that we have for this topic. That is, there is, there are, and in this case, we are saying that we have completed all the information that we have for the uh, this topic. So I'm going to move to the platform and I'm going to show you the um, video that we are going to um, use for this activity. I mean, it is not the activity, it's just the information that we need to uh, understand with this conversation. The conversation is called, I am your new neighbor. Soy tu nuevo vecino. Y vamos a eh, ver algunas eh, partes de lo que ellos están hablando de la conversación. Vamos a poner atención en algunos lugares que están diciendo en esta conversación porque básicamente nos va a servir para el knowledge check que tenemos. Que también lo vamos a ver para ver de qué trata, ¿verdad? Más o menos, ¿qué es lo que vamos a hacer en ese knowledge check? So, I'm going to share this screen with the sound to listen the conversation and to see the elements of this conversation that we are going to use for the next thing that we are going to do on the platform. So we're going to pay attention to this conversation and then we're going to have a discussion about the elements that we can see on the information. But give me a moment, I'm going to move to the other side. Welcome everybody to section 8. What's your neighborhood like? As we always do, we listen to a conversation in order to get ready for our topics, which will include places around town, location, and there is, there are. In this session, you will listen to a conversation between neighbors asking about places in town. Pay attention to there is, there are, 
one, any, and some. Excuse me, I'm your new neighbor, Jack. I just moved in. Oh, yes. I'm looking for a grocery store. Are there any around here? Yes, there are some on Pine Street. Oh, good. And is there a laundromat near here? Well, I think there's one across from the shopping center. Thank you. By the way, there's a barber shop in the shopping center, too. A barber shop? Welcome, everybody. To okay, we are going to begin with this part. So we are going to do it by sections. In this part, she said something very important that is related to this topic. Section eight, what's your neighborhood like? As we always do, we listen to a conversation in order to get ready for our topics, which will include places around town, location, and there is, there are. Okay, in this case, she, uh, she said that, that we're going to listen in something related to places in town, um, location, there is and there are. In this case, we have the first uh, the first thing related to the um, the information that she is giving. We have the topic there is and there are that is completed. Now we are going to talk about uh, places in town and location. We're going to continue. In this session, you will listen to a conversation between neighbors asking about places in town. Pay attention to there is, there are one any and some there is another thing we need to pay attention to one any and some there are some words that we're going to use when we're talking about these a kind of topics but we're going to see the conversation it's because we're not going to listen again we're just going to read so in this case it's saying that we have two people that are on a neighborhood so in this case, they are neighbor, but they are just meeting each other. Son vecinos, pero se están conociendo. Él es nuevo en el vecindario, así que va conociendo, ¿verdad? El lugar. So we're going to begin with Jack. That is the, uh, the guy that is talking in this conversation. And uh, he's saying, excuse me, I'm your new neighborhood, Jack. I just moved in. And the lady said, oh, yes. And Jack continued talking. I'm looking for a grocery store. Are there any around here? Aquí empezamos. Él le dice, ¿verdad? Que es el nuevo um, vecino que se acaba de mover, que se llama Jack. Y ella está como, ah, en serio, como, what is the thing here? Y le dice que está buscando una tienda, ¿verdad? Donde él puede comprar super duras o cosas por el estilo y le dice que si hay alguna cerca de ahí are there any hay algunas a ser, cerca del lugar y ella le responde yes there are some on pine street hay algunas ahí está el uso del there are there are some on pine street oh good and is there a laundromat near here Y hay alguna lavandería cerca de aquí. Another question with there is. Or in this case, is there. Is there a laundromat near here? And the lady said, well, I think there is one across from the shopping center. Aquí ya tenemos también lo de las direcciones. There is one across from the shopping center. Thank you. By the way, there is a barber shop in the shopping center too. Ella le dice que también hay como una barbería, ¿verdad? Una peluquería en el, en el centro, ¿verdad? Y él se quedó como a barber shop. But why is she telling that? If you can see on the image that a guy, or Jack in this case, has a very long hair. And that's why the lady is saying that there is a barber shop on the shopping center. So in this case, we're talking about different places in town. And also we're going to talk about like the different uh, like stores that we can find on the neighbor. 
And in this case, in this conversation, we have a laundromat, a grocery store, and a um, shopping center, and a barber shop. Aquí tenemos cuatro lugares diferentes que podemos encontrar en la ciudad, ¿verdad? But if we go to the knowledge check that we have here, we have this map. I'm going to move for a new window because I need to do it kind of bigger like this. So in this case, we have this map. We have a public library. We have a shopping center, a gas station, electronics, post office, a Joyce gym, all days department store, first national bank, Prince grocery store, eh, we have a park, we have a uh, mom and pop's grocery, eh, Parker's drunk store, Tap's shoes, King Plaza Hotel, Rosa's restaurant, Frank Cafe or Coffee, and Jamison Hotel. Ahí tenemos todos los lugares que podemos encontrar en la ciudad. Tenemos el banco, tenemos la eh, gasolinería, la biblioteca. Tenemos una tienda o un centro de compras eh, donde podemos comprar electrodomésticos o cosas de electrónica. Una, eh, un hotel, tenemos el parque, tenemos una cafetería, un restaurante, tenemos otras tiendas. Eh, farmacias, ventas de zapatos, zapaterías, and different things, hasta gimnasios. So, this is the image that we are going to use for the Knowledge Check 3.4. Eh, for the ones that uh, have this activity completed, that's okay, don't worry. We are going to just do the, the activity. Vamos a hacer la actividad en la cual ustedes, bueno, en este caso vamos a, a dejarlo de esta forma. I just need you to look for the different places that you have on this map. And then you are going to help me with the answers of the things that we have on the knowledge check. Voy a dejar el mapa un momento para que veamos los diferentes lugares que tenemos en esta ciudad o en este neighborhood. Y luego, después de... Eh, ese tiempo, después de los cinco minutos, eh, vamos a completar el knowledge check diciendo qué lugar está en dónde y cómo y por qué. Like in the exercises that we have there. So, it's 9.45. We have five minutes. 9.50, we are going to say the answers. A las 9.50 decimos las respuestas de ese knowledge check to 3.4. Para los que no lo han completado, lo pueden hacer en este momento. Pueden accesar a la plataforma y ir respondiendo al mismo tiempo. So, we have five minutes and we are going to uh, say the answer for the exercise. So, let's look for the places.
Okay, let's go to the exercise. So I'm going to move to the platform and we are going to read every of the exercises that we have here. So in this case, let me, I don't know if I can do it like this one. I know bigger. Mm -hmm. But I need to move. A little bit. Mm -hmm. Give me a second. I'm going to move to do it kind of bigger because it's kind of short. This one. Okay, like this. <laughs> Okay, so we have the first one. Is there a near here? Yes, there is one. It is on the corner or Elm Street and Maple Avenue. Está preguntando si hay una library, hotel, o park en la esquina de Elm Street and Maple Avenue. ¿A qué se refiere? <laughs> Hotel. Um. A hotel, okay. Next one. Is there a... Y tenemos tres opciones. Bank, gym, o laundromat around here. Yes, there is one. Is next to Prince Grocery Store. Está a la par de Prince Grocery Store. ¿A qué se refiere? Bank. Bank. Ah, very good. A bank. Next one. Is there a, y tenemos tres opciones, park, Joey's gym, or department store. Y dice, eh, Jerry. A. Which one? So, in this case, it's on Main Street behind Parker's Dog Drawer. Está detrás de la farmacia. Se refiere a... Department Store. Ah, okay. A department store. Number four. Is there... Y tenemos aquí tres opciones. A cafe, gas station, or hotels on Pine Avenue. No, there isn't, but there is one on First Avenue and Main Street. Uno en la primera avenida y la calle principal. ¿A qué se refiere? Gas station. Okay, it says gas station. Okay. Número cinco. Are there, y tenemos tres opciones, hoteles, public library, grocery stores, on Main Street. Si está en la calle principal y le dice que no, y que hay algunas nice stores on Pine Street. Entonces, nos referimos a... Okay. Tenemos tres opciones. Hotels, public library, grocery stores. Y dice que no hay en la Main Street. Pero hay buenas tiendas en Pine Street. Entonces, se refiere a hoteles, public library, or grocery stores. Grocery stores. Grocery. Ok, muy bien. Vamos con la siguiente. Number six. Is there a near here? Hay gimnasio zapatería o grocery store cerca de aquí. Sí, hay. It's between the post office and all day's department store. Está entre la post office y el all day's. ¿Qué es lo que está entre eso? Entre el post office y el all day's. Gym. El gym. Very good. So in this case, they are talking about gym. 
Number seven. There is there a on Second Avenue? No, there isn't. There is one on First Avenue across from shopping center. Tenemos electronic store, park, and bank. Dice que está en la primera avenida y está across the shopping center. ¿Qué será? Electronic, electronic store. Electronic store. Let's see. Electronic store. Number eight. Is there a around here? Yes, there is. There is one on the corner of Main Street and First Avenue. Está en la esquina. Is a public library, a payphone, or a drugstore? Payphone. A payphone. Okay. Let's see here. Payphone. Next one, number nine. Is there near here? Yes, there is one next to a gas station. Está a la par de la, de la gasolinería. Hotel, cafe, or public library. Next to the gas station. Public library. Ah, very good, public library. And the last one, number 10. Are there any on First Avenue? No, there aren't. There are some on Maple Street. Restaurants, gas station, grocery stores. Dice que están on Maple Street, en la calle Maple. ¿Qué hay sobre la calle Maple? Restaurant. Restaurant? Okay, let's see. And we're going to check the answers. Of course, they are correct. Todas ellas están correctas. Así que para los que todavía no lo han eh, completado, number one, hotel. Number two, bank. Number three, department store. Number four, gas station. Number five, grocery stores. Number six, gym. Number seven, electronic store. Number eight, payphone. Number nine, public uh, library. And number 10, restaurant. Okay, we have completed this knowledge check and we are going to complete the number two and three. In this case, that is the number 3.9. And the 3.11, uh, I guess, tomorrow or on Thursday. And also, we are going to complete the meter. In this case, we're just going to see what is this meter about and what are the different parts that we have on that exam. Vamos a ver cuáles son las partes. En este caso, son cinco partes. Comenzamos con listening. Continuamos con completing the conversations. Then we have choose the correct answers, rewrite the scrambled sentences, and some readings. But in this case, we are going to do all of these things on Thursday. So in that case, we're just going to um, analyze the different parts that we have on the meter because we need also to understand what is the... Uh, in this case, it's not the meaning. It's like, why we are doing something like this? Tenemos que entender cuál es el propósito de esos ejercicios. No simplemente es que los vamos a contestar y ya está. Obviamente, ustedes se van a adelantar y pueden trabajar en su examen y en las eh, noble check. Pero también tenemos que entender por qué estamos haciendo ese tipo de eh, ejercicios o ese tipo de exámenes como ese. But uh, we're going to continue with the topics that we have for this section, and we're going to continue with them tomorrow and on Thursday. We have because we have two more days to complete this second week, and then uh, we are not going to see each other on Monday because you know that is like uh, the work day. So in that case, we're not going to have this session on Monday 1st, May 1st, so we are going to see each other on Tuesday. Eh, recuerden que la próxima semana 
va, no nos vamos a ver el día lunes, nos vamos a ver hasta el día martes por el asueto del día del trabajo. So, we're going to complete this week um, in two more days, and then we are going to continue with the work on the next weeks. So we are going to end the session here and we are going to see each other tomorrow with the next topic. So have a really good night and see you tomorrow on the session number session number three, I guess. So have a really good night and see you. See you tomorrow. Good night. 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 Good night.